I have always struggled with excessive screen time and I've always wanted to find a solution where I don't have to carry my iPhone with me. And last year we did this where I replaced my iPhone with an Apple Watch. Today we're gonna do it with the Ultra 2. Let's see if this is possible. There are three things I wanna figure out. One, is the battery life gonna survive? So we'll do battery updates throughout the day. Two, can I get all of the major tasks that I wanna get done, whether it's paying for things, tracking my workouts, and just experiencing life in New York City. And three is communication with friends, messaging, phone calls. Is that pretty easy? And we're gonna be testing all the new features on the Apple Watch Ultra 2, like the little double tap with my fingers and see if it works. Because it's cold here, and sometimes you can't use your watch with your gloves. Let's go find our first adventure. The first thing I did was wake up and I took my Apple Watch off to put it on the charger because last time y'all yelled at me for starting the day without 100% battery. So today we're starting with 100% battery at 6.40 a.m. I still tracked my sleep. I made sure to get ready while the Apple Watch was charging in the morning. And the first thing I was gonna do is grab some coffee. We went to the Osprey, which is a beautiful restaurant in Brooklyn. Can I pay with Apple Pay or do you need a card? Yeah, I can pay, you can do Apple Pay. Yeah. Dan, I approve your restaurant, I take Apple Pay. I enjoyed my beautiful coffee in the lobby and luck. 85% battery. Oh, there he is. <laughs> What's up? Hello. Hi. At this point, Sheriff's gonna run Leadville with me next year. Oh, uh, I, uh, my mom's calling. <laughs> All right, let the run begin. Just a cheeky run, you know, like five mile pace. <laughs> yeah. Five miles? <laughs> oh yeah, you're doing kilometers. No, no, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. You're talking about miles? Yeah, I'll say Five minutes per mile pace. I went to the Osprey and I got a coffee. Oh, you did? And I wanted to see, could, would they take Apple Pay? And? And they did. <laughs> After waking up, traveling on the subway, doing about a two and a half mile run, I'm down about 20% battery life, so we're in this high 70s. Come through. I'm going to break the line. <laughs> Thanks. A big part of this challenge is that I'm not using my iPhone, so I turned off Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on my iPhone, and it's not going to connect to my Apple Watch. We're running cellular on the Apple Watch, and the goal is, can I survive? with just my Apple Watch today and no iPhone. One thing I like doing is posting all my runs on Strava. Follow me there, at Shervin Shares. And you can't directly push Apple Watch data to Strava unless you have your iPhone. You can manually import it, or now there's a new feature where you can automatically import all of your Apple Watch, Apple Health runs into Strava. But what I do need to do is have my Apple Watch, I think, connected to Wi-Fi or directly to my iPhone to be able to upload that information. Three, two, one. Love it. Bam. I guess that's one of the downsides of not having an iPhone. Can't take photos. All right, so I just ran, which means I'm freaking hungry, and I wanna get some food, so I think we're gonna go to this place called Clinton Street Baking Company. So let's ask my watch to navigate us. Navigate to Clinton Street Baking Company. It's gonna get me transit directions or walking. I think it's too far of a walk, so I'm gonna switch it to transit, because that'll be 10 minutes faster, less walking. Looks like I can take the bus. I prefer the subway. Go! View the map. I could also type this in if I really wanted to. Oh, well, the subway's 290 now. Last year it was 275. It says I need to walk 0.3 miles to Fulton Street Station, take the J train, a couple advisories. It's gonna depart in six and 13 minutes. I'm gonna ride at four stops to Essex Street, and then we have about an eight minute walk to our destination. So I can actually tap view map so we can figure out where we need to walk to get to the subway station. So let's walk on over. One thing I remember from last year was that we didn't have on-device Siri support, which we do now, so it can translate what I'm saying on device, which is much faster. Last time it was a little buggy, and if I didn't have good cellular connection, it was a bit slow. So it seems like the navigation and the Siri transcription was way faster this time. Now that we've arrived at the Fulton Street Station, I know that I need to board the J train to Jamaica Center. It uh, departs now and in seven minutes. All right, the best part about Express Trains is I don't need to authenticate on my watch or phone. I just tap and we go in. Boom, and just like that, I don't need to use a card. I don't need to tap my buttons at all. You just walk right in fact about the New York City subway is that it's really loud sometimes and New York City in general is really loud and loud noises are not great for your hearing. It can cause hearing loss over a long period of time. So what I do love is there's a noise app and the Apple Watch will, will notify me when I'm in really loud noises. And then two, when I plug in my AirPods, it's actually gonna reduce really loud sounds to protect my hearing just a little bit more. On the subway, I get extremely bored, so I always have to listen to music. And since we already got our AirPods in, let's, let's jam out and play some Taylor Swift. We just got off the subway and there's a north exit there and a south exit there. I don't know which one I take. On Google Maps, on the iPhone, it'll tell me exactly which one. So that kind of just optimizes my exit from the subway. So here it just says exit, Delancey Street in Essex. So we're just gonna take one of them and see what happens. Now what's nice in the new update is that I can view the map once I get off the subway. All right, I have three bars of cellular, but it's not getting me directions. So the connection might not be that good here. The Apple Watch cellular is a little weaker than the iPhone, smaller device. So we're just gonna walk and hope that we get better connection as we go. 
Sometimes things don't work as advertised, so I don't know, there's some connection issues. But luckily it's Quinton Street Bakery, so I'm assuming it's on the street. We'll find it. So it's an hour long wait for this restaurant. They don't take Apple Pay, but we're still gonna go. I have to carry a credit card with me, another loss for this restaurant. Dan just sent me some movies and videos. So what's neat is when Dan messaged me, if my hands are full or I have gloves on, I can just open it up, double tap, and it'll open up the prompt to reply. I say what I just need to say, and then I double tap again, and it'll send the message. It's that easy. I, did, I actually do really like this double tap feature a lot. I don't know if you're gonna watch videos or look at photos on your watch, but if you need to quickly glance at it, it's pretty easy. I don't have a credit card, but I know we can withdraw cash using the debit card on my Apple Watch. Let's head to an ATM. Navigate to the nearest Bank of America ATM. So we're gonna get walking directions to the nearest Bank of America ATM using Apple Maps. Looks like it's working now, which is really nice. What I do need to do sometimes is I actually need to tap the screen and then I can scroll in, zoom out. If I move, it'll rotate which direction I'm facing. So that's the compass working right there. It looks like we need to walk that way and 0.3 miles away. All right, we are at 55% after four hours of very intensive high use. Let's see if we can go another four hours before it dies. It's buzzing, we're almost here on our right. So most of the major banks, you can put your debit card on your Apple Watch or iPhone, and then you can use that to tap to withdraw cash. And sometimes it's locked, so you can tap to even just get inside the building as well. So we're gonna try that right now. Okay, so I'm gonna double tap on the Apple Watch, scroll down to my debit card right here. And then I find the mobile device, contactless reader, tap, and then we're gonna enter my pin. Okay, we want it in tens. I just withdrew all the money in my bank account. That's all I got. So make sure to turn on your notifications, subscribe, and follow me on X and Instagram, at Sherman Shares, so we can keep making content because we only have 20 bucks left. Obviously, that's an inconvenience, but if I know that I need to get cash for something, I can plan ahead and easily get that done. No need to carry the card. Apple Pay. The little things in life, man, they get me so excited. Can I pay with Apple Pay? Yeah. All right, here you go. <laughs> Thank you. So for all my international folks who maybe use WhatsApp, you can reply to WhatsApp if you get the notification. You can reply to a Google voice message if you get the notification, but there's no like app to open it up and like scroll through the messages and see the history and the past. It's just like, we just got a notification that our reservation is ready. So I just replied one. Now we just need to go walk in. I can reply, but I can't view past messages. Okay, I know there are third party apps that you can download, but I've tried them and they're a bit buggy, so I just stopped using them. But it is possible to get a third party WhatsApp app. All right, we made it into the diner. Well, we gotta pay cash, no credit card today. Let's eat. So right now we're about to eat a meal at this restaurant. If I wanna input what I ate, take a photo of it, and scan my CGM in my arm to get my glucose values, I can't do that. When it comes to wearables, you need to have an iPhone as like your home base hub. I'm getting a phone call right now, and we're gonna try to answer it with a double tap. Oh, come on. There we go. How's it going? It's going good, it's really loud where you are. What are you doing? Oh, it is, can you hear me? But there's a ton of background noise. Nah, not really. Are you like on some futuristic device right now? <laughs> this is the Apple Watch Ultra 2. Oh, okay. And it's really noisy. Yeah, I, I, I can hear you just fine. You sound great. Later. Later. Can we hang up this way? So especially in New York when it's cold and I don't have gloves that have the touchscreen feature, it's nice that I can just double tap and answer the call. But you really got to make sure the strap is on tight. Sometimes it takes a couple clicks but it's pretty easy. My arm is already tired, so I'd probably want to wear AirPods when I answer phone calls. New York, the weather's always changing. It could be raining, it could be sunny, it could be cold, it could be hot, it could be windy, and that can happen multiple times a day. So I really love having the weather app on my watch, and I can tap it here. I can see, all right, what does it feel like versus what is the actual temperature? Is it raining? But getting kind of basic weather on the app watch, is really helpful. It's raining, we're gonna go to the track and do a workout on the track. Get a city bike and show you some biking features on the Apple Watch. Card support contactless payments. So we're gonna pull up my credit card here and now we're gonna tap it. Oh, last year we tried this and the Apple Pay did not work on the machine. Maybe the machine was broken. Okay, maybe it doesn't work. Is it only MasterCard? Are you serious? I don't even have a MasterCard. All right, battery update. It's been six hours since I took the Apple Watch off the charger this morning. We are at 33% battery. So I could turn on low power mode, but I'm not. Let's head to the track and do a run and see how much more we can kill the juice. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start a workout, an outdoor bike workout on my watch, and that's gonna cause my phone to turn into a bike computer. I'm gonna show you what the bike computer, GPS slash speed, distance, and all that shows up on here while we track my heart rate and everything from the watch. It's gonna look for GPS and see all this information, like power, cadence, distance, speed, my heart rate zone. So I'm gonna put my iPhone in my pocket, 
We're gonna bike to the track and get our next workout in for the day. We're we just working out all day. All right, this is a massive stress test. I know this might not be a normal day, but we're gonna bike to the track. Let's get out of here. Theory resumed my workout because I forgot to start it and I don't have any hands. Average miles per hour, nine. Heart rate, 108. 0.34 miles so far. Call me Tour de France, baby. Let's go. All right, so it's paused. You can see all my data here, my heart rate, a maximum speed distance. So we are done. And now we can end the workout. I can even end it on my iPhone. Boom! Let's head to the track because there's a really cool feature that I love every time I go to the track. I'm disconnecting my iPhone once again. It is now off, Bluetooth off, watch is no longer connected. This is back on cellular. We're at 30% battery and it is 1 p.m. in the afternoon. So last time I was here, you know what happened? I broke my foot. And now we're back where it started. Sometimes you just need to overcome your fears. Let's run. All right, so we're at the track and we're gonna do a workout here. Uh, usually my coach writes the workouts, Coach Parker. He'll put it into Training Peaks and I'll manually put it on my Apple Watch. But Training Peaks, Apple Watch integration coming soon. Turn on notifications to see that video. All right, so Apple Watch, first thing, I'm gonna go ahead and open the workout by pressing the action button. I'm gonna put Outdoor Run. It's gonna know that I'm at the track automatically, so I just choose a lane. I'm going to say lane two. And then now it's gonna know the lane I'm in. GPS is already locked, my heart rate. Boom, it's gonna update much faster when you have a chest heart rate strap. So it's just easier to do any heart rate based training. That's just a regular out indoor run, but I'm actually gonna do a custom. Just press the action button to start the workout. So I can press, boom, start the workout. I press both to pause the workout. One for the next interval. All right, some thoughts that I usually have about the track mode feature. Because the action button is start the workout. It's also the next interval on the track workout. So sometimes I accidentally hit it. If I'm really sweaty, my sleeves are wet, it can tap the screen and go to the next interval. So I highly recommend you water lock during workouts just so the screen doesn't like change your workout. And then two, be mindful that you might accidentally hit the action button and go to the next interval. So if you did a custom workout for eight 200s and then you miss one, like just be ready for that. Sometimes I'll add in extra, like I'll make it 10 200s as like a backup in case something goes wrong. That's it for today. We're gonna head home. You know, we've been outside all day and I'm gonna show you all the features that I use when I'm at home with my Apple Watch Ultra 2. We're on our way home back to the content closet. It is 2.30 p.m. and we are now 16% battery. But once I'm at home, as you can see, I connected to Wi-Fi, so I'm no longer using cellular. This is still on, but it's turned off. It's potentially gonna use less battery. So let's head inside and get some computer work done, or at least act like I'm gonna get some computer work done, so you can see what an experience might feel like. Welcome to the content closet, holiday edition. Hey Siri, all lights on. Got it. Boom, thanks Siri. Look at that, Tages. Set this up for one of his videos so you can go watch that on his channel. And luckily we have an Apple TV with home pods plugged into our TV here. So now I'm just able to use my Apple Watch to turn the TV on. But the one thing that is nice, if I start playing music on the home pods, maybe we just like auto play. Boom. So now music's playing on the home pods. It's gonna take a lot of load, but I can control the audio. And I can pause, I can jump forward, um, but I can control the actual home pods right here from the Apple Watch. So this part works really well and I do like because I can control the volume of the TV and the home pods pretty quickly. It's low effort. Everything else is a little bit on the buggier side, but it seems to work sometimes, but not all the time. See, like I'm not gonna wait for this. This is just taking too long to load. I just give up. If, it, if it's not faster than 100 milliseconds, I'm out, I'm lazy. So one of my favorite features is when I sit down at my desk I can go ahead and just press a key. It's gonna say unlocking with Apple Watch. My Apple Watch unlocks and bam, my desktop is ready to go. Just like that, I'm in and it's unlocked. So I love how quickly that experience is. Now that I'm a famous YouTuber, my calendar is totally empty, but one of my favorite features is the calendar on the Apple Watch. I have it right here where I can see what my next event is and I can tap on that. And if it's like at a different location, because sometimes I have to travel around in New York, I tap that event, I can tap the location and it automatically gets me directions, walking, subway, whatever I want. So it's easy to just get there quickly. I don't have to like go search for whatever place I need to get to. It's all right on my watch. So one of the biggest things is when I'm in the kitchen and cooking, this never happens, but sometimes it will. Uh, like I'm gonna be cooking some really good meats here. Maybe I need to put some hot water as well. And I need to set multiple timers. I can easily do that on my watch. Set a timer for two minutes, boom, done. Set a timer for one minute, boom, done. The feature of being able to set multiple timers is very advanced AI, and finally, Apple has released that. So I can set multiple timers. The on-device Siri is oh so fast. I don't think you understand how juicy it is to know that Siri just transcribes that quickly. I love it so much. I can go ahead and double tap. 
boom, it'll cancel out the timer. So if my hands are dirty, I can still cancel out the timers. When I use the restroom, I typically like to weigh myself, and here we have a smart scale. But now Siri is coming out soon. I don't think it's yet here yet, but in the next couple weeks, it should hopefully be here. But I can go ahead and just say, log my body weight, and then I can say whatever pounds as well, and it'll automatically update my body weight, update Apple Health, and it makes it seamless. So if you have a regular body weight scale, you can just go step on it, get your body weight, tell Siri, and then you're off. And it automatically updates. You don't have to worry about connecting a smart scale. You don't have to worry about spending more money. And one of the biggest feature updates of the Apple Watch Ultra 2 is a brighter screen. So now if I want to set up the flashlight, I can go ahead and tap the flashlight mode and it's gonna be 3,000 nits instead of 2,000, so it's even brighter. The thing I love about my Garmin, and this is the main reason I wear this watch, is because of the flashlight. I don't have to look, eyes closed, boom. Now we got a flashlight. I love this feature. I really would love to see a little flashlight on the front of my Apple Watch Ultra. It would just make it that much more ultra. Now, when it comes to bands, I have two favorite bands right now that I use the most often. Nomad did send me some bands, so I wanna thank Nomad for sending me these. They're really nice, really rugged, really appreciate it. But my two all-time favorite bands are the Ocean Band. One, because it's very secure. Like, this one does not fall off. I love to wear this when I travel just because like, it's less likely that I'm gonna lose the Apple Watch. And two, as you can see, it's a little rigid, so there's little bumps, and it makes drying the band that much easier. If I'm wearing it, I go swimming, I shower, whatever, the water is going to evaporate and it's gonna dry much easier than other bands. My second one is the Nike band with the holes. Same concept, because of these holes, there's just less surface area where moisture can contain itself, and it just feels nicer. I like to have bands that are drying, but just be mindful, if you're wearing something on your wrist, take it off, dry it, don't let moisture just accumulate underneath your strap. We have a battery update, it's 3.20 p.m. and we are officially at 10% battery right now. Now, I'm gonna reactivate my iPhone to my Apple Watch because there's two features that I absolutely love and I just have to talk about them. One is find my iPhone with precision. So before you could do the control center and then kind of get the beeping noise with your Apple Watch, but now it'll actually tell me where my iPhone is because I always lose it, I put my iPhone down, I forget where it is and this just makes it that much easier. So it's gonna make that noise and it's gonna show the distance on my watch and then I can get up and as I move around, it's gonna say, hey, you're getting closer, farther. Oh, oh, closer, closer. And boom, I found it. And it's gonna give me the green check mark and we're good to go. So I love that precision find on my iPhone. The next feature is remote camera. So I love taking photos on my iPhone. Sometimes I wanna be able to put my phone down and have it do it for me. I have noticed this is kind of slow to load sometimes. It can take a minute or two. I don't know why that is. And then I can go ahead and start stop recording video as well as take a photo with burst shots directly from my Apple Watch controlling the cameras on my iPhone. I can zoom in and out with the digital dial. I can switch the front facing to the rear facing camera, whatever it is. It is 3.30 p.m. and we are at 9% battery. So we probably have an hour left. And the last thing I wanna talk about is sleep tracking. I do wear my Apple Watch when I sleep. I usually just give a little bit of juice in the morning, a little bit of juice at night, and I make sure to have sleep mode active. You can have that automatically set up in your settings. It'll track my sleep time, my wake time, and then provide sleep stages as well. And then give me trends, like am I sleeping enough over the last few weeks? Am I trending upward, downward? And that's really valuable to just keep me in check to make sure I'm having good sleep behavior. I've ran this experiment every year and my goal is to disconnect from my iPhone and not allow technology to slow me down, but rather use technology as a tool to elevate my mental and physical health. And every year I'm gonna try to find new ways to do that. But my biggest takeaways and learnings really are that the battery life just isn't good enough. We're at 9%, it's almost four o'clock, it's not gonna get me through the evening. Two, photography. If I wanna capture videos, photos of high quality, I can't do that unless I have my iPhone with me. And three is wearable integration. There's a ton of apps on the iPhone where you're controlling devices in your home, wearables, Bluetooth, all that stuff and they're not fully integrated with the Apple Watch, so especially for my CGM, maybe for my smart bed, like I need my iPhone to be able to operate these things, so I can't give up my iPhone unless I'm willing to give up these wearables and these other technologies in my home. Since you enjoyed this video, go watch my video where I talk about how to make your Apple Watch as accurate as possible. It'll be linked right here.